What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So we got updated Gara video today with Archon Shards and Incarnon. So it's basically my most up-to-date Gara video with the most late-game loot. If you enjoy these types of loadout video guides, make sure you're sub to this channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. Also check out the live stream channel. I'm very likely live on stream right now with new Twitch drops. So come stop by and get your Twitch drops after watching for a few hours. All right, enough about that. Let's get into this Gara build video. Uh, so as far as what we're using today, we've currently got the helmet ability Eclipse from Mirage, which will give us increased to weapon damage. Also works on our stat stick to make our fourth ability explosion do more damage. Just to show right now how much we currently have. While well, in the light, about 56k with a you know, not a mutated incarnate or anything like that. So once you jam all these buffs on here, You'll be nuking for multi-million damage in an AoE with Gara. So let's quick, quickly show all the stuff we got here. Uh, and we'll just summon in some enemies too so we can just quickly show how that's going to work. So as Gara, you do want to be using your fourth ability. Honestly, you want to be using all your abilities a lot on Gara. You got a second ability you want to have active all the time. You got a fourth ability that every time you cast it will freeze enemies. And then also cause some more damage. We've got the third ability from uh, Mirage as Eclipse. And we're actually using some armor strip from Anairu right now to insta-kill enemies uh, if enemies are giving us any problems, but they really shouldn't want to be stacking enough damage on this loadout. So that's going to be basically the idea of it. Freeze enemies solid and kill them in one shot as Gara. You're also pretty tanky while doing this and can provide some good AoE nuke. It. That wave right there is going to probably kill most things on the normal path easily. So showing all the, you know, Archon Shards mods and the like. Let's start off with the Archon Shards. You've got two Casting Speed Archon Shards. Now I'd recommend, of course, if you have Tau Shards, go to Tau Shards. They're just stronger all around, but I'm trying to make sure these videos are as accessible as possible uh, for people trying to do late game builds. So we're doing normal shards in these videos. We've also got, uh, looks like two, or actually three ability power strength mod, or shards. So if you have Tau versions, you'll be getting a good 15% extra power strength here. If you've got Tau version of Casting Speed, you'll just be casting abilities faster. As stated, we have the Helmet Ability Eclipse from Mirage, so you have to sacrifice your extra Mirage if you got one for this. Uh, other options you can replace here, you can put on Roar from Rhino, you can put on Nourish from Grendel. Eclipse from Mirage is, is quite nice though, especially with how the scaling for stat stick goes. For our Incarnate Weapons of Choice today, we've got the Ceramic Dagger, it's going to be one of the best stat, stat sticks in the game easily. Uh, and as far as our evolutions, the same ones you're going to probably see in every Incarnate uh, setup on the Ceramic Dagger, giving us... Uh, Gun and Blade giving us initial combo per primary kill. You'll have to remember to do this at some point for playing Gar because your abilities can nuke everything down. So get some primary or secondary kills before you do this. Uh, 20 initial combo, adept re reflexes, and absolute valor, increasing crit chance by 30%. This does work on Gar's first ability, just doesn't really seem to matter that much uh, because we're already doing so much damage. Who cares about a little bit extra crit on this thing? So. Our stat stick build is going to be uh, not focused around crits, as this is a upfront damage Gara build. And yeah, we got a Riven with initial combo and melee damage. If you don't have this, uh, Gara's Shattered Lash does scale off of element, uh, Impact Puncture Slash mod. Actually, just Puncture and Slash mods. Uh, so you can just put Buzzkill in that slot instead. I'm going to also show you something really quick, too. Uh, something you can do with really almost any frame of the game is go to the settings go to customize key, actually it's invert, tap, or hold. If you're on Gara, you can put inverted on here, and what this will do is it means uh, that basically she has two different versions of her first ability. Normally, it would go like this. Throw out like a glass uh, lance, I guess I'd call it. But, and then what normally would happen if you hold the button, it would be a slash like that. We've changed it to invert the control, so the slash is the tap, and the hold is the, the lance. So it's gonna basically basically change the, um, the like how much area that, that's, Shattered Lash will cover, and it also will change the damage type to Slash damage, so quite nice. So here we are with the build we're showing today, uh, and again, one of my new favorite Arcanes is Arcane Steadfast. On ability cast, a 20% chance the next three abilities will not cost any energy. This is great. This lets you just spam abilities constantly uh, and not really care about your energy economy at all. Now, we do have Arcane Energize on here. I know I said not at all, but we also... You don't need more damage. The thing is, you want to make sure you can cast your abilities all the time as Gara. It's very, very important. Uh, and one of the abilities we have to cast quite often is Mass Vitrify, which costs 75 energy. Uh, and of course, we have to cast uh, 
Shattered, and Shattered Lash on top of that, you have, to, you have to cast this every time you use your Force, so it's basically 100 energy cost between those two abilities. So, with Arcane Steadfast, you'll be sh uh, saving a lot of energy over the course of a mission. Uh, so this is an Umbra build right here, uh, with no adaptation or anything like that, because we do get damage reduction from Gara's second ability, Splinter Storm. With this much power strength, 90% damage reduction. Quite nice. You can put this on teammates, too, uh, and you can also put on enemies to debuff them, but it's not really necessary to do that. Uh, so yeah, Eclipse. Now, if, if you did want to jam more power strength here, you'd get a bigger Eclipse buff. Um, but you have to keep in mind that we are trying to get as big of an AoE as possible here. Because I just like to make big AoE builds. With this setup, our, uh, our, uh, our radius of slashing enemies to death around us is 6.25 meters. Quite large for a Gara build, honestly. Uh, and then our explosion range for nuking is 37.5 meters. So extremely large nuking range. Uh, and this will hold up in relatively, like, almost every mission in the game. So, we'll be showing Steel Path gameplay later in the video. Uh, the rest of the build is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you know, we have a good amount of DR, so these Umbra mods, for giving us more health, are quite nice. We're also using the Fierce Incarnate for Lifesteal, so we can basically just get uh, healed up back to full in, like, one shot. And Rolling Guard, because Rolling Guard is the meta. You technically don't need this on this build, but I'd say still run it, just in case you get Slash proc or something. As far as our other Incarnons, we've got the uh, the Latron Incarnon with the Flensing Spikes uh, Incarnon upgrade, giving armor removal on puncture status effect on enemies. I'd just like to let you know this does not matter about status duration. So with a negative status duration Riven like this, they're still going to be fully armor stripped. This is just an extra backup if you don't want to use your Unairu Focus School for some reason. Because uh, this can also kill enemies and it can also armor strip. So very, very nice. Uh, but you're not going to really need armor strip against most enemies in the game, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, the rest of it is just pretty much, you know, red crit fun. Nothing too crazy here. You could technically put on Arcane Dexterity to get more uh, combo duration on your Ceramic Dagger. But it's mostly initial combo anyway, so it's not going to make too big of a difference. We're going to the Theorist Prime. This is honestly one of my favorite Incarnons. A reminder, if I was to redo my tier list, I would put this thing in S tier. It's really, really strong for high levels. And also, this, this Lifesteal Augment here has been very nice for some build synergies recently. So, uh, if you don't have a Riven, just figure something out. I guess just put another uh, crit mod there or like a multi-shot mod or something. I just put Lethal Torrent there, I guess. Uh, but yeah, Winds of Purity gives every damage instance of this thing Lifesteal. So, uh, yeah, every time we shoot an enemy, we'll get heal back the full. We have 90% DR and about 1,000 health, so it's quite nice. Uh, and by the way, lethal, uh, lethal momentum, the projectile speed, this does affect damage fall off of this weapon. And then moving on to the last couple things here before we get into the gameplay, we have Unairu Focus Tree giving Armor Strip uh, from Caustic Strike. Second ability launches an, enemy, uh, an energy bomb that explodes in an 8 meter radius, removing all enemy armor. You can also remove shields too. This just makes the enemies completely taking your full damage and they will die in one tick. So that's going to basically be all the, uh, the loadout stuff. He's also got a Panzer Volpophila. With uh, the standard build, I usually run on all these Panzer Volpa Pilots. So let's get into that Steel Path gameplay, and we can unleash the power of the broken glass. This frame is honestly, like, it's one of those frames that flies under the radar, I feel like. Uh, she's a little bit annoying to, to play, you know, you have to cast a lot of abilities. Uh, but, you know, you could really get some work done with Gara, uh, Especially with a high damage build with a new Ceramic Dagger and Karnan like this. Now, if you are going to be using the Ceramic Dagger for Gara. Things that you should definitely keep in mind is that, like I said earlier on the video, make sure you get those 100, uh, you know, primary or secondary kills for your initial combo before you get into, like, you know, farm mode like this. That's one of the other reasons why we're running the Latron Incarnate. It can armor strip. It can also, you know, kill enemies really fast. So it's perfect for what we're trying to go for here. Uh, as, you know, Gara's damage is not really armor bypassing normally. So having some armor strip and a good primary at the same time is just, it's great synergy here. So... Yeah, everything we have here is good synergy as far as the uh, Incarnons. You know, we got a Lifesteal secondary. They can also deal some big heat procs. Uh, we have a Armor Stripping and AoE Red Crit primary. And then our, in our melee is the Ceramic Dagger, the best stat stick in the game, uh, bar none. It's got good Riven Dispo. It lets you keep this big multiplier of damage. So the reason the, the Ceramic Dagger is so good on Gara is because that combo multiplier is going to influence how much damage your explosion of your wall does when you use Shattered Lash. So when you have the Ceramic Dagger and Karnon keeping that high combo multiplier all the time, like I'm literally not even using my melee as normal at all this entire mission. I'm able to keep that massive damage uh, going the entire time because of the Ceramic Dagger and Karnon. The initial combo is the key here. So just try to jam as much, as much initial combo as you can. If you don't have an initial combo Riven, Corrupt Charge is going to be one of your friends as well. 
So as you can see, uh, this is just Gara stuff right here. I'm putting it on a wall, exploding it. Uh, there was now if you haven't played Gara in a while, like I haven't played Gara in a while. They actually did change her fourth ability. It now explodes inwards, too. You no longer need to go with the outside of the, of the wall to get your damage increased. Now, I don't know when they did that, but it is such a nice quality of life for Gara, just to, like, you know, not have to worry about... By the way, speaking of not having to worry about this, this you are invincible while casting your four, and this Acolyte is just like, what do I do about this? Uh, not much, apparently, because the Acolyte just kind of, like, fumbled around and then died. So... Let's see if we can get some more uh, Acolyte insta-kills in here. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, is going to be Circular Survival in the Void, or rather on Lua. And it's quite nice. So um, yeah, for, for Gara Prime and like, you know, Gara Normal, it's pretty much the same situation, honestly. Um, and as, as far as your other stat sticks, I have seen people using, uh, you know, crit chance on Gara. I just don't think it's really necessary, honestly. Uh, it's it's going to give you similar damage numbers, and also, like, is this not enough damage for you right now? Like, these guys are dying in one tick through Steel Path armor. I don't know, like, what else you could really ask for. Now, there's an Eximus right there not instantly dying. But, I mean, I'm the thing is, he's not next to me. If an enemy is actually next to me, they are so beyond dead. Those armored, uh, those armored Corrupted just jumped up there, took 347,000 damage through their armor, and if anything gets close enough, is taking multi-million damage, so... Once you're this stacked up, even the Acolyte will die in one tick. So uh, keep that in mind. It doesn't always happen. It might be a little bit of a uh, weird feature, but um, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, you're a, a gigantic broken glass machine. It's, it's a little bit scary, honestly. So All right, the power of Gar is unleashed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you know, I've literally killed Acolytes in one tick with her. Uh, that Acolyte earlier, I think, was not the one I was want, wanting to show. But basically, an Acolyte spawned on top of me and just instantly fell over and died. So... Yeah, um, let me know how you guys feel about Gara in the in the comments down below. Uh, is she overrated or underrated? I think she is underrated, but it's not it's not like she doesn't deserve to be underrated because remember, like I said earlier, before you had to actually go on the outside of your fourth ability before you detonated to build up your damage. What an annoyance that was. We have made a massive quality of life change with Gara to be able to stay in the middle. And additionally, she's got some pretty good augments now too. I haven't tried that that new nuking augment with her yet, the one that applies a Reduced version of your two, uh, your two to the enemies to debuff them more. But as you can see right here, we don't need to debuff enemies. They're already just dying really quickly. Like those sentients didn't even get a chance to move. Uh, and as they're spawning in, we're casting our four. That arcane steadfast keeping our energy so high, we just everything is frozen. Everything is dead. As they as they get closer, they're dead again. So that's basically it, guys. I appreciate all support as always. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.